So we now know that chemical bonds form because the potential energy is reduced between charged particles and the atoms involved during bonding. Lewis' theory helps us predict what type of structures will result in a reduction in potential energy. In particular, it states that the net potential energy is lowered between atoms when they can share or transfer electrons to each get a full set of valence electrons. Let's review what valence electrons are. These are the electrons in the outermost energy level of an atom. Using the Bohr model, this can be viewed as the electrons in the outermost ring. So that's one valence electron on that outer ring for sodium and seven for chlorine. We can also define this in terms of the quantum mechanical model as the electrons in the highest occupied S and P sublevels of the atom. So for sodium, the highest energy level is the third energy level, and it has one electron in that energy level in the S sublevel. Chlorine has seven valence electrons in the third energy level, and they're split between the S and the P sublevels. There's one last way that we can predict the number of valence electrons for any atom. It turns out that that number corresponds to the column or group number of the representative elements on the periodic table. Remember that the representative elements are found in columns 1 and 2 and 13 through 18 of the periodic table. These blocks in the periodic table are also associated with filling the outermost S and P sublevels. And it turns out that every element in column 1 of the periodic table just has one electron in that outermost energy level found in the S sublevel. So every element in column one has one valence electron. In column two, all of those elements have two valence electrons associated with a full S sublevel. We move over to the other side of the periodic table. In column 13, we start filling the P sublevel. So we still have our two valence electrons in the S sublevel, and then we add one in that outer energy level to the P sublevel, and this gives us three valence electrons. Column 14 has four valence electrons, two in the S and two in the P sublevel. And we keep moving forward. As we keep going across the columns, we keep adding one extra valence electron. So 15 has five valence electrons, 16 has six, 17 has seven, and 18 has eight. So this gives us the general rule of thumb. That the last digit or uh, group number for our column equals the number of valence electrons for all of the elements in that particular column. And this works for the representative elements. There's one exception to this rule, and that's helium. So helium um, is actually in column 18, but it has two valence electrons. And this is because the outermost energy level for helium is actually that first energy level. It only contains an S sublevel, and the maximum number of electrons that can go into an S sublevel is two. What we also find when we look at these valence number relationships on the periodic table is that column 18 with eight valence electrons represents a full set. So this is the noble gas column. These elements don't tend to react or form chemical bonds because they have a full S sublevel and a full P sublevel. If you add another electron to any of these elements, we move to a higher energy level. So this brings us back to Lewis theory. Chemical bonds form when potential energy is lowered between atoms. And according to Lewis theory, that potential energy is lowered when atoms can share or transfer electrons to each get a full set of valence electrons. 
And as we've just seen with the periodic table, for most elements, a full set of valence electrons is eight. So this gives us the fundamental rule for Lewis theory. It's called the octet rule. Most representative atoms share or transfer electrons to gain eight valence electrons. There are some exceptions to the rule, of course, and we'll discuss many of these along the way. For right now, though, the octet rule is our guiding principle to help determine how atoms combine into different compounds. We'll start with Lewis symbols for neutral atoms of different elements. In Lewis symbols, we visually represent the valence electrons that atom possesses using dots. We start with the symbol for the element, and then we place a dot around that symbol for each valence electron it possesses. For example, calcium is in column two of the periodic table, and this means it has two valence electrons. So we place two dots on calcium. The convention is that we place one dot to a side around the symbol. If we have more than four valence electrons, then we start pairing up those electrons. Calcium only has two though, so an appropriate Lewis structure for calcium might look like this. It doesn't really matter which side we place our valence electron dots on, as long as we do one to a side before we start pairing them up. So this is also a valid symbol for calcium as is this. Now let's do the Lewis symbol for sulfur. Sulfur is in column 16 of the periodic table, so this means a neutral atom of sulfur has six valence electrons. We place the valence electrons in this manner, one to a side, until all four sides have one, and then we pair up on two of the sides. So now we have six dots or six valence electrons around our symbol for sulfur. Here we see the Lewis symbols for all the elements of the third row of the periodic table. Notice that as we go across the row, the number of valence electrons each element possesses increases by one. And therefore the number of dots around the symbols increase by one until we reach our noble gas argon, which has a full set of eight. So Lewis symbols can also be used to illustrate ion formation. Here, sodium metal loses its one valence electron to become sodium ion with a plus one charge. Calcium starts with two valence electrons. It loses both of those to become a calcium ion with a plus two charge. Now notice that the Lewis symbols for these look exactly like the ion symbols. We do not show the valence electrons or dots around the symbols because the valence electrons are actually lost in cation formation. This is not the case for anion symbols. Chlorine starts with seven valence electrons and gains one to form the anion chlorine with a negative one charge. In addition to the charge here, we also show that full set of eight with eight dots placed around the chlorine, chlorine anion symbol. In a similar way, sulfur starts out with six valence electrons and it gains two to get its full set of eight. And of course, in gaining two, it also develops a negative two charge, which we also show on the Lewis symbol for the anion for sulfur. Finally, we can use Lewis symbols to also show the formation of an ionic compound in one reaction. So sodium, we know, loses its one electron to chlorine in the formation of sodium chloride. In the Lewis symbol for the ionic compound, we have the symbols for sodium and chloride ion right next to each other. Sodium has no valence electrons on it, while the chloride ion is actually in brackets to show that all of the valence electrons are on it, not on the sodium. We see the same thing with magnesium and oxygen, except that two valence electrons are now transferred, so that we end up with a plus two charge on our magnesium, a minus two charge on our oxygen. But again, in that anion symbol, we use brackets to show that all of the valence electrons are on the oxygen and not on the magnesium. 
You can also write Lewis symbols for ionic compounds that contain three or more ions. We just use subscripts to indicate multiple amounts of either cations or anions. So for example, calcium has two valence electrons, fluorine has seven and only needs one. So when calcium reacts with fluorine, it actually loses a valence electron to two different fluorine atoms. The net result, calcium fluoride contains one calcium ion with a plus two charge and two fluoride ions, each with a negative one charge. The two is written as a subscript outside the brackets for the fluorine ions. Again, though, we use those brackets to show that all the valence electrons are on the fluoride ions, not on the calcium. So in summary, in Lewis symbols, valence electrons are represented by dots. The dots are placed one to a side around the element symbol and then paired up when more than four valence electrons are present. Ion symbols show the charge on the ion and either no valence electrons for cations or a full set of eight valence electrons for anions.